Jih, selamat siang Bapak dan Ibu Pertama-tama terima kasih untuk kehadirannya Ini kayaknya ada sedikit miskomunikasi Jadi kami tuh ngikutin jadwal moderator Which is Dr. Amelia Yang rawuh nanti 1.30 Nah timnya kayaknya presonnya jam 1 Jadi nyun sewu Bapak Ibu sudah menunggu 30 menit Tapi kita akan segera mulai Saya sudah pastikan Dr. Amelia sudah perjalanan ya, Jadi 5-10 menit tergantung berapa lama berlarinya karena agak jauh juga ya dari Sarsita nih mohon ditunggu terima kasih untuk kesabarannya
you see you put uh, do you provide slide for your cv don't you have excuse me slide, slide for your cv do you have that slide uh, for uh, your cv uh, um, cv uh, curriculum vitae do you have the slide yes it's here no no, no. the uh, curriculum vitae your cv oh, okay the other you piece Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Good afternoon everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Why so many people here are from re neurology resident? <laughs> How about the doctor or student? Only three or? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there are some people join us online. Is that right? Or this is a hybrid meeting or pure uh, hybrid? Hybrid. Okay, so I hope maybe for those who join us in the Zoom can also see or and hear uh, that we will have a very interesting speaker from our guest lecture. So before we start, I would like to introduce you to Professor Mira Fernoy Dazen. So she is a professor, our visiting professor in Gajah Mada University, Indonesia, and has been actively. Uh, teaching uh, and also collaborating in uh, in the research between the nursing department also from the neurology department and she is right now is affiliated to the scientific institute of quality of health care of red Belt university medical center in Nijmegen, netherlands and professor mira also has performed a large body of research on quality of care and quality of life especially in dementia and palliative care and Professor Mira also has reviewed several national dementia programs in Europe. And right now, she has been actively collaborating in GPND, right? Joint Program of Neurodegenerative Diseases with other countries in Europe. And Indonesia also as a, maybe a branch, yeah, we can say that. We can also collaborate as a part of GNP, GPND program. And she is also a member of the expert advisory panel of Alzheimer Europe and the advisory board of Alzheimer Netherlands. And today she would like to give a, a experience from her point of view about the, the social health matter, particularly in dementia and palliative care. So please, Professor Mira, you can start your speech. So please give a warm applause for Professor Mira. Selamat siang. Demikasi sunda mengdundang saya kisini nama saya mera, and the rest will be in English. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, okay, yeah, I have to use the two. Uh, okay, put this down. Well, I'm happy to talk about uh, social health with you. It, it might not be a very familiar topic uh, for you, but I can assure you it is a very into uh, important topic for you, uh, both for uh, those in the doctoral program and uh, for future neurologists. And uh, I will share with you my fascination for this uh, topic. Uh, well, I'm a sociologist by training, so that's uh, uh, close to my heart. And I connected uh, social health to um, uh, dementia. And I also want to make a next step with you to connect it to palliative care. So I also expect some active uh, activities of you. And what I, and this was, uh, uh, the theme of uh, social health has already been raised in 1946 by the WHO. Well, very well known are physical health, mental health, but social health is something uh, which is underused. And I felt like a kind of detective to learn whether it makes sense to, uh, uh, to study social health in relation to dementia, and uh, I thought it might make sense um, 
because of uh, previous uh, findings, and I am going to tell you uh, uh, to, to take you with me in that journey. So the, uh, the picture, the Javanese picture, is something when I think of social health. This is something uh, I think about. This is a social activity together to prepare for a wedding. And I, I took the picture here in uh, Jokja. Um, I also uh, make a, a statement and an issue of uh, formulating what exactly social health is, because if you don't know what it is, you don't recognize it, and it's so important to recognize it. I connected it to uh, dementia, and I also want to connect it to palliative care. So this is where my talk is about. And also, I want to raise the attention for uh, dementia here in Jokja. When I came here for the first time 15 years ago, uh, a dean told me that uh, dementia was not an issue here, uh, it was non-existent, and, uh, and when it was there, it was not an issue. Water was the most important issue. I thought, okay, it's too early, I, I don't say anything more about it. Uh, but uh, it's an urgent problem here in Jokja bec because uh, Jokja has the highest percentage of older persons and the prevalence of people uh, 60 plus in dementia, uh, of uh, 60 plus of dementia here in Jokja is 20%. So that's quite considerable. So what raised my curiosity and what started my effort to study this? Well, there is a discrepancy between uh, neurological uh, neuropathology and cognitive symptoms, meaning that it's not one-to-one. -one. So there, there is something uh, going on in the brain of people which is not always expressed in behavior, or the other way around. So nearly 50% of people with dementia did not have sufficient neuropathology in their brain to explain their cognitive symptoms. So the, the symptoms were worse than the brain condition. On the other hand, high levels of Alzheimer pathology were present in one third of very old people without dementia. So they didn't, they didn't show symptoms, but the, the, the pathology was there. Well, there must be something going on, and uh, it was thought that there might be some uh, compensatory factors that provide brain reserve and cognitive reserve. Well, so I started, and I started uh, with uh, uh, conceptualization of social health, and I want to compare with, you he here see uh, apples, um, apples, oranges, nuts, and if you have this all around, you don't you don't have anything that's that's nice, but you don't make the case of nutrition. So there are many uh, social health social health markers, like uh, like uh, social support, social network, and if you use that, uh, you you don't make the case of social health. What is socially healthy. So therefore, I use this picture. I want to compare with nutrition, like in nutrition. I don't want to speak about uh, nuts and apples and pears, but I want to speak about nutrition. So in the same way, I want to speak about social health. I already... And if you think uh, social health, you might have thoughts about it. You think, okay, that might be this or that. So I ask you now for a, a, a few minutes to write down what you think social health is. So you can talk and, uh, uh, well, I, I would like to simulate you to talk together and within three minutes or five, several minutes I come back and I want to hear what you think social health is.
Okay, I'm curious. What do you think social health is? Who wants to open the floor? Yes, thank you. Yeah. What do you think social health is? Thank you for the opportunity. My name is Kilang Nasrharjo. Uh, I think that uh, social health is a state where a person is involved proactively and reciprocated by the people within their uh, society. It can be many social circles, but when it's a society that they live on, it's going to be more healthy for them. Thank you so much. You uh, immediately raise uh, a, a point of uh, society, the wider society, and that's correct. Uh, but also, I want to start with the immediate environment, uh, and I will tell you why uh, we focus on the uh, immediate environment. Because if you are a researcher, you have to compromise. You, you want to study the whole society, but you can't. So we, we took it, made it very, a bit narrow, but uh, in essential, we also want to go to the uh, wider society. Well, we phrased it like social health is essentially a relational concept, that, that you are right, and you can relate to the, another person or to the whole, or to more persons in society and uh, in which well-being is defined on the one hand at the impact that an individual has on others, on the social environment, and on the other hand at the impact that the social environment has on the person. So this means that to improve social health, you have two levels, the level of the person himself, who can improve the social health, and also it can be helped by others uh, surrounding them. So that's, that's the, the key thing. And if you think of health, of physical and mental health, that's connected to one person, but social health is connected to, to more persons. So it's uh, much more connected also with uh, social life, with normal life. So we were very lucky that we got a huge grant from the European Union to study social health and reserve in the dementia patient journey. And what we wanted to achieve was to unravel the interplay between social health and biological and psychological factors on the trajectory from healthy through MCI to dementia. And therefore, we not only formulated uh, the concepts, but also we divided it into measurable uh, domains. And uh, as we started with, to two levels, the level of the person with dementia. And on that level, we looked at the capacities uh, of the person with dementia to fulfill their obligations and that connects with society. So what it in fact says, says is how should you behave as a, uh, a, a societal uh, person? And also not only how should you behave in society, but uh, also how should you keep your a certain level of independence even if you, uh, if, if you have a disease. And the most popular one is social participation. It speaks by itself that you participate in society and not hide away, which is really a, a very uh, uh, important problem in uh, people with dementia because they have a tendency to shy away. If you look what others can do for the person, uh, a social net, there should be others surrounding uh, uh, the person, there's a social network but it's important what the others do, whether they are supportive or uh, whether they are not supportive and even whether they, uh, they have a negative influence. And the appraisal of the relationships 
can, if, for instance, if you feel lonely or if you uh, very much appreciate your relationship, that is also important in social health. So this is, in short, the whole concept of social health. Well, having said this, so we, we now know uh, what social health is, but why is it, is it so important in relation to dementia? So what, what can happen? What does uh, the, the social interaction do to dementia and especially uh, to prevent dementia? So here I concentrate on the prevention. Uh, most of my work is on interaction with people with dementia, but this study is not. So what, what does social health do? In fact, it's a driving factor, this hypothesis, a driving factor to stimulate the use of the cognitive brain reserve. So I talked about brain reserve, there must be something uh, in between the not direct relationship between uh, neuropathology and, uh, uh, and symptoms. So the cognitive reserve through active facilitation and utilization of the capacities of the individual and the social environment. So, this means that if you have social contacts, you have to be active, you have to do something, you can't lay down, you, and that stimulates uh, the brain, and in fact, everything goes back to uh, the statement, use it or lose it. It's, it's a kind of activity, uh, but we, we don't mention it as an activity, it's just that's what we do, but it, it's really a very important activity. And that, we think, slows down cognitive impairment or maintains cognitive functioning in old age. So this is our hypothesis, and th this is where we, this is what we use in our study. I want to say a little bit more on cognitive reserve. That's the brain's ability to use brain networks more efficiently or to recruit alternative networks in the presence of pathology. So, in fact, this is the hope. This is where things can happen and where we have an opportunity maybe to prevent dementia because, well, this is... Um, uh, I think this is still rather new to think about prevention of dementia uh, from a, a social uh, from a social angle, and there is still a, a huge debate uh, uh, going on on what can prevent dementia. So we tr we try to make a huge consortium with huge databases, and uh, this is. Uh, the whole effort published. And, well, what we did. We did it, uh, we used two ways. These are two pictures, one an imp uh, impressionist uh, picture. Uh, uh, impressionism is a, a art stream which is very popular in Europe. And Impressionism reflect what is what is there, what can be seen, what is a kind of uh, objective. I always have a problem with using the word objective, but this is it. Um, right, uh, on the right you see the picture of Afandi. You might know, at least you should know. And uh, uh, that's an expressionist meaning that he expresses his feeling in painting. That, that's another level. And what does it have to do with our study? Well, we used uh, epidemiological studies to uh, present the defects, to look at associations, and, but also uh, we used qualitative research going into the meaning things have uh, for patients and for their uh, caregivers. And Cinta will did that, that study and she will tell us a bit more about it. Uh, but so we try to look at the problem from different angles. 
uh, because it's very complicated and we acknowledge that by making a very complicated uh, project. And here it should move. It's stuck. Can you give us a hand? Well, meanwhile, I, I continue, and uh, what, uh, what I want to tell you about the uh, impressionistic uh, part of it, so the, the Paris Street you see here, where our Paris Street is the association between social health and cognitive decline and dementia, which we studied in huge, huge databases all over the world. And what we found, is uh, that the, uh, a strong social health is protective against cognitive decline and dementia. And this is consistent with earlier uh, epidemiological uh, studies. And uh, well, this is very, very encouraging. Um, and, this, uh, and also we found that poor social health uh, is a risk factor for dementia. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, okay. I go back. Yeah, yeah. Here it is. Here it is again. Uh, and the uh, uh, the twenty uh, twenty three articles are from our group. Um. So th this is ver very encouraging, especially because of its consistency. And, uh, and even more encouraging is that if you combine social characteristics, the effects uh, are stronger. Uh, so at least we, 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 ha well, we found something which might help us and which, is, uh, which we can use immediately and if you think on how, how to prevent dementia, which is important, well, uh, many of you are, you are very young, but you are patient, you are confronted with your patients. Uh, this, these are things you can do now. You can do now, and, uh, and it's very important, uh, especially at young age, to make a group of friends which uh, uh, can go along with you, well, through life, often. So this is the encouraging, uh, the encouraging finding uh, from the kind of epidemiological uh, research. And I now would like to invite Sinta to say something about her study, um, because she did uh, a she analyzed the results of a study we did in six countries and uh, and it's about uh, even with glasses i can't see it <laughs> 60 60 interviews or 69 interviews well yeah. since then the floor is yours yeah. what you have so thank you prof mira for the opportunity so my name is sinta from nursing department so um, during this study, it's quite of interesting study, talking about methodology itself, it's quite challenging and fun at the same time. So within this study, uh, the aim of our study is to add more detailed identification of social health markers in the context of dementia. So this uh, study actually conducted in six countries, in the Netherlands, in Italy, German, Poland, Australia, and Indonesia. So we contribute to the data. So here we see uh, we have 20 cases, and per cases we have one patient, one family caregiver, uh, as well as the healthcare professional. So we requested uh, the, the case, each case having this kind of uh, person. And in total we have 69 interviews because uh, several countries uh, doesn't involve healthcare professional, for example, or doesn't have family caregivers. So in total we have 69 interviews. 
But I think before we elaborate more to the result, I think we can go to the next slide, Prof. Mira, to give more, yeah, to provide more picture on, I don't know how. Oh, so no, Mas, kita eh, next Mas. error mana Mas? Nah, so I think it's easier to see this uh, slide first than uh, to go more detail uh, into the previous slide. So as Prof. Mira already mentioned, talking about social health, we need to have two levels. Our own level, that's the individual level within ourselves, as well as the social environment to others, connecting to others. So as we see from here, the individual level, the concept of social health were actually are is actually uh, is a combination between the first domain that is the capacities the second domain is the independence and social participation through our study we found that in the first domain the capacities uh, of person with dementia we found that people with dementia they tend to live as normal as possible. So in our data, in Indonesian data, person with dementia, they would like to still go to the mosque every morning for you know praying there. And then the family caregiver, they also feel safe because uh, the family caregiver will be, or the, the patient with dementia will be taking care of somebody else's in the mosque and even take them back. Uh, to the house safely. So this kind of a living life as, as usual is one of uh, the, the characteristic of uh, the first domain in acknowledging the capacities of people with dementia. The second one is uh, the independence. For example, person with dementia, they would like to have some independency to decide where to go. And then if that's possible, they also want to still do some walking uh, in German data, for example, they still want to go to the shop next to their house and buying bread, you know, not buying rice, but buying bread. So those kind of activities that they still appreciate it. And then the last one, uh, in regard to social participation, person with dementia, we found that they would like to decide whether they want to come to attend to uh, a meeting or an event. So in Indonesian data, it's very interesting. In regards to social participation, we found that one person uh, of dementia, with dementia, he decided himself to withdraw as the leader of an organization, knowing that maybe he's not that capable anymore. So he uh, consciously withdraw as the leader, but he's still coming uh, regularly to that uh, meeting. So that's kind of interesting. So from the second level, we also found uh, many examples from the structure. For example, we found that living close by to the uh, nearby their family, that's also provide some strength to the person of dementia. We also found the function of family caregiver for the person with dementia. Uh, one of the example is maintaining the person uh, of dementia with dignity. So for example, sometimes uh, people with dementia or sometimes or most of the time depend on the stage, they do not really understand what's going on anymore. But for example, as a father, normally in Japanese culture, we tend to ask or uh, asking advice from father figure. And although this person already have dementia, the family still discussing thing with this person with dementia. So that, that that's one of the thing as as appreciation of of giving them a dignity, maintaining dignity in front of the patient. In our data, we also find some expression of affection. Uh, for example, in Japanese culture, maybe we are not getting used to you know hug and holding hands and that's how uh, people or uh, family from the person with dementia try to to share their feelings with the person with dementia because sometimes uh, they cannot talk anymore properly but they can still hug and holding hands and they they share affection through uh, those warm so i think that's uh, the result of our study prof Mira. 
thank you, Cynthia, for bringing alive your results. And, well, Maybe it will. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> here it is. So, well, the ultimate uh, aim of uh, of the study uh, was uh, to have um, to have indicators for preventive interventions. Uh, before we. We, we didn't even uh, th think about, about uh, preventive interventions. I, I've, I'm part of a European organization on psychosocial interventions uh, for people with dementia, and that was not a theme in, in our group because we thought, well, that might not be possible. Uh, but having these findings, we have to move on. It, it, there are possibilities, so we have to act and we have to develop uh, preventive interventions. And there are very few until now, and they all have in common, in common that they stimulate a variety of meaningful and satisfying group activities. This means activities you do together, and also activities uh, that are meaningful so not uh, just loosely useless things uh, doing together that people don't really like, uh, but they have to be meaningful. And what is also, we analyze the uh, uh, preventive interventions, and they, what is also uh, striking is that they address all domains of social health and use the full potential of social health, both at an individual and at an environmental level. And there is one very, very famous uh, preventive intervention which, uh, uh, which found a positive effect, and that is the finger uh, study. And, but in that study, they, ha they uh, look at nutrition, exercise, and so on. And it's not a specific social. But um, I had the pleasure to be in a, in a meeting with uh, Mia Kivi Pelto, who is uh, the leader of the group, and, uh, uh, and and everyone was silent. And I thought, well, how come? I have the opportunity to ask her a lot of questions, and I said, well, uh, I don't see anything about uh, social activities. And then she said, well, in fact, all our activities are social. And I said, how, how do you manage to get the people engaged and to keep them engaged? And she said, well, we do a lot of effort to do so because when people don't come at an exercise meeting, uh, we call them or we, we, we go to them and we ask, why didn't you come? We missed you and so on. So they very actively keep them uh, socially engaged and uh, and the nice thing is that she is now writing an article for Frontiers, of which I am an uh, associate editor, uh, to explain what they did uh, socially. So that is a very nice opportunity to learn more, more about this, because, uh, well, this is also a great sign of hope. So far, I talked about uh, dementia, but um, social health is, uh, well, I told you I associated it with dementia, but it's a general, uh, a, a, a general term and not related to a specific uh, disease. So it might also be uh, useful in, um, in, in, in other diseases and, for instance, in palliative care. Um, and uh, I found a, a very recent study, a qualitative study as well, and uh, they looked at the uh, services that facilitate social support in hosp hospice hospices. And this is a very, very special environment in which uh, things happen which we normally uh, not share, and normally you are not in an environment with other people who are going to die, and you being one of them. And uh, this very special community 
connects these people. And uh, what, what happens there is that they can boost self-confidence uh, uh, in people that have lost access to meaningful activities. So they are deprived from uh, meaningful activities, at least what, what we usually call meaningful activities, because they can be, and, and they are very meaningful to, f for instance, their family members. Um, uh, but uh, if this is an environment with people who are in the same boat. And they, are, they perceive also new friendships, and uh, they have a feeling of belonging. So they are being in the same boat in such a special circumstances is really precious. Uh, and they can speak freely about topics that other people don't want to hear even. So uh, this is a very special study and the word I gave to it is reciprocity. They can do things uh, for each other and I think this is very precious and a good example of uh, the value of social health. And there is another uh, important uh, study um, in, which, um, in which an instrument for interpersonal relationships is used and uh, this, uh, it is so important to have measures where you, you think, well, this is, this is too difficult to measure, but that's not the case. Another measure is uh, the problems and need questionnaire developed by one of my PhD students, which has been used by uh, Christanti Effendi. And uh, it's uh, the instrument is available and is used around uh, the world. And what you can do, for instance, Cristanti did, is to compare uh, to compare uh, results of Indonesia and uh, the, ne the Netherlands. And this is uh, a, a very uh, important problem: difficulty being available for others, so that people have the feeling they are not available to others and that is especially a problem in the Netherlands. It's less a problem here, so this is, uh, th this raises the why question. So you can, you, you can measure uh, uh, social, uh, social health problems. And uh, what I want to um, you to concentrate on which social health markers or characteristics are important in palliative care. Uh, I, I'm now going to do a trick which I hope will succeed. Here, here we are. So, if you think, well, social health uh, for dementia, that might be uh, nice, but I'm not so much involved in that kind of uh, of research of patient uh, palliative care patients, uh, you are uh, involved. Uh, well, uh, as a nurse, you are always involved in with these uh, patients. So, if you just just to have an idea whether social health is might be useful to use in palliative uh, care research, or what is even more important for you as future clinicians to use in the clinic. So which social health characteristics would you like to focus on? I give you three minutes. And you can talk together. So we will have three minutes for discussion about your topic, right? And then after that, maybe uh, one of you or more can try to elaborate what you found with, yeah. And also, it is also included into the for the audience in online. Please also have a active discussion with us. We are waiting for your talk. Yeah.
Okay, I'm curious. Who can I invite to say something? I, I saw some discussion over there. <laughs> no, you three. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is, uh, is important in palliative care? <laughs> can we give you the microphone? And maybe you can also try introduce yourself, young doctor from which department? Okay. Uh, thank you for the chance. Um, my name is Josephine, and I'm here uh, with my friends, uh, Arin and Rara. <laughs> and from our discussion, we think that um, in palliative care, it's important that we also uh, Increase the or the awareness of the dementia for the people around the patient, like the family and maybe the neighbor, and also maybe uh, we try to to look uh, around the aspect that it's lack in the patient. For example, maybe the patient is lack of social interaction or like meaningful connection, and then maybe we can uh, try to get the patient involved in some uh, social interaction or maybe. Uh, yeah, like that, um, to engage more in that. Thank yeah. you. Well, excellent. Thank you very much. So it's, it's also very relevant in, uh, in palliative care. I will go back to where I was. And um, the last thing I, w I want to show you why social health is uh, relevant, is also relevant for longevity. And this is uh, one of my, my favorite studies from Holt Lundstad. And the strongest predictor of how long you live is uh, social integration, meaning how much you interact with people as you move through the day. So how much chats you make, it doesn't matter about what, if you have little chats during the day, that is very, very important. And the second one is a close, having a, a close relationship, a, a, a com confident uh, person. And the other things are uh, the, the familiar ones, but the social ones are on top of this. So this is about what I say, that social health is matters, and um, social health matters, and I, I w before I end, I want to say um, uh, that uh, Amelia and uh, and her group are heavily involved in that uh, uh, shared project, and uh, we are doing here a study in the memory uh, clinic, and uh, uh, so that's why it's very nice that, that you are here, and. Uh, we made a step further to the uh, studies we uh, already uh, I already presented. We try to use uh, proper, good, validated uh, social health measures. So that's what uh, we are, are doing here. I, uh, she explained in a lecture uh, last uh, Monday uh, how that. Uh, that study is uh, going on, but we don't do it, uh, we don't repeat it uh, here. But so, uh, uh, to summarize, it's uh, the importance for dementia is the, the evidence is, is growing. It's not a, a topic yet uh, addressed in palliative care, but so if you want to uh, do a study and need a a theme f in palliative care, it might be a good idea to study social health in palliative care, just a suggestion. And to end with, what is, I think, a key thing in uh, social health and why I was charmed about it, it's not the factology. It's, uh, that's a term from my favorite writer, Oliver Sacks, it's not defectology, but it's attention for capacity. So it's more about what people can do instead of what they can't do. It has a connection with normal life. 
well, mm -hmm. we are uh, we are on track in uh, in giving the evidence and the potential for prevention, and we already uh, have a lot of evidence of the potential for treatment of dementia, and uh, it might be also of, it will be applicable in palliative care and longevity and what you can do a lifetime development and use of social health. Thank you for your attention and I'm happy to take questions. Okay, thank you Rob Zamira for your wonderful talk. And now we, we open the discussion for those who have some question or anything to share, please ask. And it also includes for those online participants, please uh, maybe from from online, uh, please help me to notice which one that will ask. Okay, is there any question from the floor? You can talk about the social health or palliative care or maybe about dementia. Is there any question? Maybe from the right wing, yeah, because we mostly focus on the left wing. From the right side here. <laughs> Do you have any questions? How about the online participant? Ada pertanyaan nggak dari online? Ada yang mungkin raise hand? Nggak ada. <laughs> okay. So if not, maybe I'll, I'll try to lead the discussion first. So Professor Mira, because you expert in the social health and also the palliative care in dementia. So actually, uh, can we apply this social health measures or matters in other degenerative diseases, maybe not dementia, maybe like a chronic disease and like end of life disease like that? How yeah. do you think about that? Well, I, I think that might be that might be possible and um, because it's, it's a more general uh, concept and the way we applied it in dementia learns us that it's, it's, it's feasible to do it in, in daily life and in daily practice and uh, th there will be some special characteristics, uh, for instance, uh, autonomy will be different for a person with dementia, with limited cognitive uh, capacities and, uh, and, for instance, palliative care with limited functional uh, capacities. So there will be differences in, in, in how, how it works in f for that person. Uh, but I it's applicable, I, I think, for at least for cr all chronic uh, diseases. Yeah. So it still matters, right? Yeah. Uh, and in disease, we can apply this kind of social health approach to improve the quality of life. So, yes. so the the aim is in the end to improve the quality of life. Is that right? It is, and it it, it is what what I I try to convey is that uh, we underuse the possibilities of social health, they are available, we don't use them. They don't cost uh, a lot, most of the time they don't cost anything. So it's a, it's a huge potential. Yeah, I see. Very much benefit with only um, not not cost. I mean, it's, it's not expensive, right? Everybody can do that yeah. with the right approach. Yeah. Okay, so any question from the floor? Or maybe you can also ask about Businta's uh, study that she mentioned very interestingly that uh, do you have uh, do you use like a moderate stage of dementia or in the from the mild to severe one or how about that because I, I I think it will be different if the patient will be in the end stage of the dementia right. So, uh, the Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, Prof. Mira, we discussed about the stage of dementia as well for uh, criteria to be included uh, as a participant. But um, at that time, we decided to uh, involve person with dementia who still able to uh, talk, to discuss, as well as uh, giving consent that they would like to be included in the study and they can also have and they can also appointed one or two uh, family member to be involved and included as well in the study so that's the criteria uh, through our study maybe prof mira can add something yeah for the criteria of participants 
Well, uh, I think you, uh, it's correct what you were saying. So, it, and the, the consequence is that most people were in the early stage uh, of dementia. Yeah. Yeah. And also, it's interesting that you said, uh, for example, the one that also lived previously as a leader, and then he yeah. real uh, consciously, right? He uh, retired, mm. and then because in for the moderate stage, mostly they just cannot decide anything and maybe the role of the social health in here might be different. I mean the same but different approach, right? If, if we use like a different stage of the disease, it may be have different approach. So maybe do you have any experience what kind of a social health approach that we can use, for example, for the earlier stage and the late stage? How about that? Is there any significant difference that when we apply these social health matters? Yeah. Well, um, it's... Uh, it it does apply to to all people in all stages. So, and as uh, Cinta uh, expressed, in people who who can't express themselves properly in words, they have other means of expression. Uh, but uh, and also with regard to uh, independence and autonomy, uh, the people with dementia want to be involved in making decisions, uh, at least in saying that they don't want to be involved. But if they are excluded and overlooked, that is that is very painful. And uh, so w what you can do with regard to social health, there are many things that you should not do. For instance, uh, uh, overlooking people with dementia or talking about a person with dementia and not to the person with dementia. These are, uh, well, this seems little, but it's very important. So actually the same social health measure, but maybe different, how to say, adaptation, right, between the early and the late stage. And how about the result from the other Western country? Because maybe, maybe there are yeah. some cultural differences, right? That's very interesting because um, the preparation of conducting this study, it took around one year and a half to... <laughs> If that's the preparation itself, yeah, to discuss, uh, to building the team, to to set the goals and to set the standard and those kind of thing. We even made the the workshop, yeah, Prof Mira online workshop to make sure that we are on the same page of the qualitative study, uh, as well as for data analyzing, because then we see uh, what what should we do with all the differences in culture. But we cannot have everything, right? So at the end, what we do is that we try to compare and contrast and acknowledging that we are coming from six different countries. Some are similar. For example, Indonesian culture, I think it's a bit similar with what happened in, the, in Italy, for example, with all the collectiveness and uh, family collectiveness and family cohesiveness. I think that's a bit the same with Italy and we also, you know, uh, the religion also took a lot of part in our life, I think as well as in Italy they also do so. So, But we cannot pointing out all the details, so what we found is just providing uh, the general uh, result, what happened uh, generally in the six countries without pointing out every detail. But I also would like to acknowledge what Prof. Mira already mentioned. Sometimes, as the normal or healthy people, we tend to overlook uh, somebody uh, or person with dementia. For example, you guys, uh, as the clinician, whether you are nurses or doctor, we are talking about the patient in front of the patient with the family caregivers without asking the patient themselves how do they feel and those kind of thing through our uh, qualitative study they mentioned that i don't like to go to the doctor because they always talking about me without asking how am i feeling those kind of things but uh, you know they they uh, told the story about that so i think that that also the message of the function of the family caregivers maybe that's interesting. So in any stage, that we should try maybe for the doctors and the uh, clinical expertise, uh, clinical uh, practitioners, we should also 
uh, involve the patient, right? Either maybe in the late state, we still at least ask how they feel. So it's, it's important notes, I think. So maybe is there any audience here that ha have experiences uh, to take care of it? Oh yeah, please. Hi, my name is Kilang and I want to ask a question. So uh, I know this in later generation, even in Indonesia, there is a diminishing uh, in social interaction and social isolation is also increasing as we uh, are adopting into a more westernized uh, lifestyle, if I uh, can describe it that way. And uh, I would like to ask a question uh, about uh, how we can combat this uh, social isolation, whether social modification uh, and uh, education for the public so we can change the culture that are changing in a uh, negative way. Can we do a prog something to uh, prevent that change? Uh, or is making a fabricated community for people with dementia is a more viable option within that context of a changing society that we cannot stop? Well, in, in, in general, I will talk, first talk in general about uh, social isolation. Um, well, th there, there are people who are very uh, comfortable in, in being alone for a while. That's, that's different from social, uh, real social isolation. And we learned during the COVID period uh, uh, that how bad, how bad it works, uh, real uh, social isolation, and the more strict isolation was, the worse the consequences uh, were. So it's important that people realize uh, uh, and, that, and that's kind of public health education uh, that you should prevent to be isolated and uh, especially persons who uh, who have a kind of resistance to uh, to reach out they, they still should realize that uh, that is important uh, to engage and for other people around it's also important to engage and how do you do that if you say uh, well I, uh, I I come and visit you uh, because you are uh, so lonely, that's, well, how will you feel? Yes, that's, <laughs> that's really awful. Uh, so you have to, to uh, make a little trick. So, for instance, I, I would like to go to the mu movie. Would you like to join me? I would like to go for a coffee. Would you like to join me? So invite them instead of giving a stigma, you are lonely and, and people are very, loneliness is, is, is a very much a, a kind of stigma like uh, dementia is. And I'll, I'll come to uh, dementia, what people in dementia uh, fear, they notice, they are aware most of the time and uh, well, nearly almost they are aware that something is wrong. And uh, so it's not that they don't notice anything, they, they do. And they notice that they don't function as, as they used to do. And that they, uh, they are ashamed of. And um, we, we did a little study in, in which we couldn't find participants uh, to participate in a social activity. And we thought, oh, it was such a nice uh, uh, idea, but they refused. And then luckily, the funding organization agreed that we, that we went back to the persons and asked them, why do, don't you want to, uh, 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 to communicate, to be involved in this activity? And that was really crucial information we got. They told us that they were ashamed on uh, going into a, a new group. They were ashamed of uh, their uh, declining capacities. Uh, so, and, and that was where we really learned that people with dementia withdraw because they are ashamed not being able to do whatever they did before. So what we can do is wel welcome uh, people with dementia, keep them engaged, and uh, well, don't, don't, don't blame them uh, uh, and don't help them too much, so allow them what they can do themselves, but keeps them included. And that might be a main, the main message I want to convey to you, and especially uh, to clinicians who, uh, 
who are uh, uh, learning uh, uh, also caregivers to uh, to deal with people with dementia. And I also want to emphasize which uh, precious culture you have here uh, uh, of uh, of in include being more inclusive than than the Western one. Keep that, and and also w w I want to warn. Uh, for the uh, social media, for the time spent on social media, because that is the time you don't spend on making contact with friends and building a, a good uh, social network. Is that clear for you? Okay, thank you very much, because this is a very interesting topic, so maybe I would like to invite Professor Uwe to give comment prof about this social isolation, maybe. So maybe, yeah, especially in this topic that is social isolation, Maybe do you have any comment, Professor? Well, <coughs> uh, my comments will not be related to that, but as I'm listening to you, Prof. Mira, about dementia, so I'm wondering, am I starting? <laughs> 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 oh, when should I be? <laughs> when should I be concerned of, of that problem for myself? <laughs> um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm thinking of... Uh, more on, on uh, this faculty as an institution, yeah, because then uh, actually uh, when you start mentioning of the problem and how, and that we should not underestimate the importance of, uh, you know, making sure that everyone is sort of engaged in the social uh, activities. Um, and I think this is also one of the reasons why uh, in all the uh, work setting that we are involved because uh, if, if I look at you know, those with any resident, Koas uh, resident, maybe they spend most of the 24 hours in the, in the <laughs> hospital or, or uh, academic institution. So, uh, this, I think, highlights also the importance of the work setting to uh, optimize also all the activities to support, you know, you have all the list of the good things, the exercising, stop smoking, and all, <laughs> all the things. So, yeah, uh, there are perhaps many more things that we, uh, that the institution could, could do also uh, in this area of promoting uh, social health, whether it's within this activity or, or even outside when we are uh, talking about community service, how, how we can also include this issue. Uh, another thing is uh, uh, wondering also if there's, a, uh, I believe there is a measurement here, Prof. Mira, for this social health, and if if this uh, sh should this be included as as a variable that that is routinely measured whenever we are trying to describe I don't know epidemiology of certain diseases or certain conditions and maybe we, we should think more about this kind of of uh, issue also as as variables to measure. Yeah. Thank thank you very much uh, for your comments and. Especially, especially for grasping the importance on on the workplace and how how you can work on so on your own social health. And with regard to uh, measurement, uh, social health is an umbrella uh, concept with many domains, and uh, and part of the the project was to look for uh, instrument measuring uh, social uh, social health. And uh, well, we found at least uh, 50, uh, more than 50 instruments measuring parts of social health. But here with it in Jokja, uh, we have, uh, we use a, a social health measure, uh, personal uh, researchers uh, questionnaire, and that covers uh, nearly all domains of, of social health. So that, that was one of the, well, I, I very much welcome the openness here in Jokja because the, the other said no, we, uh, we don't use new instruments and uh, so this is our database and that's closed and we do. But it, the openness to use new uh, instruments that are validated, not haphazard. Well, for instance, loneliness, there is a, 
uh, a very well validated instrument. Uh, there are at least two or three. And then uh, in epidemiology studies, they use just the question, do you feel lonely? Which is uh, highly uh, sensitive uh, for, uh, for, for what you want to present and not, not an answer on whether you are really uh, lonely. So yes, there are instruments and we gather them and I really hope that the German team will uh, publish it uh, in, in a few months. And uh, so then they are also uh, available for, for everyone that not everyone has to do the effort to, uh, to, to find them. And but here is already that important uh, instrument uh, available. Yeah, because this, uh, to my knowledge, this faculty has this HDSS, it masih ada nggak ya? Health, demographic, and surveillance uh, studies. I think that has been done in well, nearly five years or more, maybe. We are we are following up uh, longitudinally uh, a population in Sleman district, yeah. and I mean this is uh, one opportunity where we can. Uh, use because every year I think they evaluate the questionnaire and if yeah. they should gather uh, much yeah. more and this is a population based study so yeah yeah I, I think this is one opportunity to uh, elaborate this importance of this issue yeah I, in in Sleman and then chronic thinking of chronic diseases yeah where people have to deal with uh, uh, illnesses for such uh, even the rest of their lives, uh, I think, uh, understanding better of this issue, maybe we could help to make the existing interventions in the health program a bit more, yeah, more social comprehensive and also addressing uh, this aspect. Thank you so much. So you have a task <laughs> to <laughs> connect with the Sleman study. Yeah, maybe for those uh, students or in here, maybe for resident students or the doctoral students who has have not had any topic for their uh, study, <laughs> you can try to apply this population-based study with HDS as Lehman and put the issue of the social health so that the social health matters can still have a full uh, picture that how social health really matters to all disease. So maybe that's close for today because the time is up. So I would like to a summary, make, make a summary that social health do matters in any kind of disease, in any stage of diseases. And it might be like a hot issue for the next future because we know that for uh, everybody, they have uh, emotion, so they we should acknowledge their emotion and we should elaborate how to approach them with the individual approach because not everybody the same. So in the end, we aim to improve the quality of uh, life, right? So maybe that's all from today. We hope that all of you for the audience can get uh, more benefit and we wait for your collaboration maybe. Thank you very much, Prof. Mira and Bu Sinta. Please give them a warm applause. And thank you very much, Prof. Uut, for your insight.